conversation with a few uh, ladies um, in, in light of what we're dealing with here with the baby dedications who had had miscarriages. And we were talking about uh, what they were going through and uh, the pain of, of those things. And in that, uh, I began to understand something and then also begin to hear something from the Lord. And that's this. Three years ago, our oldest child, uh, Jocelyn Brianna, was received by the Lord. She passed away June 19th of 2015, and God began to give me a heart for people who were grieving as I was grieving. Amen? And what we found out very shortly after that is that we weren't alone. There were other people who had experienced what we had experienced at different times or different ages. But there was something I began to understand when talking to those ladies that it doesn't matter if a child passes away at 17, at 16, at 8, at 3, at 2 months, at 3 months in the womb, that that child is still their child who passed away. But the difference is that we can have a funeral and people can come and support us and show their love for us and send flowers and put wonderful things on Facebook. But when a woman has a miscarriage, things are different. Sometimes, understanding this from those ladies, the embarrassment of it it's kept a secret, and it's a suffering in silence. And it's something where they feel utterly alone. But then I began to understand this from them, just as real as, is this all right? Are y'all okay being the church? We're going to be the church this morning. Just as... I have memories of Jocelyn at birthdays and on vacation and things like that. These women also have memories. The fluttering in their womb. The feeling of their, not, not just feeling, filling of the room and the difference when it's empty. Everybody hear what I'm saying? And wherever they are when that occurs becomes tattooed in their memory. And the names of those children become something unspoken. Just as we have hopes for our children and grandchildren, these families also had hope for what happened. The Bible says that before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. As far as we're concerned with the biblical worldview, conception <laughs> begins before conception. Conception begins with the concept in God's mind. Because he said, before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. In Matthew chapter 19, and I believe it's verse 14, Jesus says to suffer the little children. Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. That, by, that verse is really saying that the kingdom of heaven belongs to these children. I'm going to ask something that's going to seem hard to some individuals, but God is going to release hope. He is going to release faith. And if you 
will walk with me in this, the presence of God is going to fall on us so heavy as we be the church for our sisters this morning. During baby dedications, parents come up and we speak that child's name and we all receive that child. And it's an acknowledgement that that child is here. Amen? Here's all I'm going to ask. If you don't want to do this, you don't have to. And I understand uh, the stigmatism that might come with this, but God wants to do something wonderful in your life. I'm going to ask that if you have had a miscarriage, God wants to bring healing in that area if you're willing to step forward right now. I'm going to ask that if you've had that happen to you, that you just walk down to the altar. Thank you, Jesus. You're not alone, ladies. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just go into worship right now? God's going to heal. He's going to heal, set free, and deliver. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Showers of mercy and grace. That's right. Just support each other. Love on one another right now. You don't have to do this alone. Thank you, Jesus. There is freedom. Thank you, Jesus. Showers of mercy and grace. God is going to set people free right now. I'm going to also ask this. If the fathers are in the room, I'm going to ask that these, the fathers that are in the room join these, these mothers. If you're here in the room right now. Jesus. Showers of mercy and grace. Thank you, Jesus. On every bed. Thank you, Lord. There is freedom. Now, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Here's something I want you to know. Every Every once in a while, we made this, uh, Pastor Josh made this, this video that has a lot of Jocelyn's pictures. And I was speaking to my son yesterday, and we were talking about Jocelyn and how sometimes. He gets sad, but he does it alone. And he said, Dad, sometimes I can't, I can't remember her voice. And I told him, well, that your mother has a video of Jocelyn saying Happy Mother's Day and that you can listen to that every now and again. And I bet that every other voice would flood back. And I have watched a video sometimes, David, and in that video, there's a part where she's singing, and I can remember. 
But then it's important for me during those times to just be able to say her name. This is going to be the part, I believe, that's going to really set you free. And church, here's what I want you to do. When they say those names, I want you to repeat those names. Are you willing to do that? I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet and just support them. This is where we get a chance to be the church. I know a lot of us came to receive today, and but listen, this is what God is doing. Let's be the church, amen? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you say those names. And it's all right. If you didn't know if it was a boy or a girl, I bet there's still a name. And that name is right. So when you have that opportunity, I want you to speak that name. And then congregation, I want you to repeat that name. Amen. Caleb Chapman. Caleb Chapman. Donnie. Simeon Rebecca. Simeon Rebecca. Caleb and Noah Cruz. Caleb and Noah Cruz. Antoine Lamont. Antoine Lamont. Jackson Uriah. Daryl Bennett. Seven Here's what I want you to understand about Elder Stinson. They have 11 children. Four that are with us right now, three that are triplets, and then one after, and seven children with the Lord. Amen. But out of that pain, pastor, power has come, and the key to now works with women as a as a doula, uh, helping them to go through birth. Amen. Listen, church, God can take your broken places and make those your stronger places if you let him. Yes. Amen.
Thank you, Jesus. Could you all stretch your hands this way, Lord, in the name of Jesus? Lord, I thank you, Lord, for healing to flow, Lord, in the name of Jesus over each one of these individuals. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for power, Lord, Lord, for, for your anointing, Jesus, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you that even as they walked up here, Lord, as they were walking, you were already healing them, Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that out of their pain, Lord, that they would walk right into power, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Set them free, Lord, and deliver them, Jesus, Lord. Lord, they're not necessarily looking to get over this, Lord, but to be able to live in this, live with this, with peace, with understanding, Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing, Lord, and how you're doing it, Lord. Lord, I ask you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would set them free in Jesus' name. Set them free in Jesus' name. I thank you right now, Lord, that they stand in their motherhood, Lord. Lord, I thank you right now. We say that they are not failures, but they are victors, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the strength, Lord, that's resurrecting in them right now in the name of Jesus. For the faith, Lord, that is rising up in them, Jesus, Lord. Lord, for them to be able to encourage their sisters, Lord to be able to encourage, Lord, their brothers, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for these fathers, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you would resurrect hope, Lord. Lord, that you would resurrect, Lord, fervency in the name of Jesus. Passion for you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We praise you right now for what you're doing. I was speaking to one individual that I believe congregation you can be seated I just want you to stand here just for a few more moments who can speak to this uh, in a more specific way than than I can amen would you receive miss uh, or Chapman um so I experienced my miscarriage November 21st of last year and I was four months pregnant so my doctors were telling me you know, you're out of the clear, you're fine, everything's fine. Next week, we're gonna see, you know, what, what the baby is, but I knew that it was a boy. So the God gave me the name Caleb. And it was two days before Thanksgiving and I was just there and I'm like, something's, you can feel, sometimes you can feel that something is not right. And to, de to deliver my child and to feel the helplessness, it was indescribable. But what helped me was as I was on the bed giving birth, I heard the Lord say, do you trust me? Do you trust me? So I just want to encourage you ladies that it may hurt deep. Some of you may have placed that hurt away, but I just want to encourage you to tap into that hurt and surrender it to God wholeheartedly because there is hope on the other side, there is joy on the other side in spite of, but you have to surrender that hurt. And you may have to scream, you may have to kick, but you need to release that pain now, today. I just want to encourage you all to, to just, to, is there, there is hope on the other side again, like I said. And even if the doctors have told you that, you know, you may not be able to have children, you still have a purpose, you still are a mother, and there's still hope. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, here's what I love for you to do right now. I want you to put your hands together right now for all these wonderful mothers. For all these wonderful mothers who are standing here right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. Your motherhood is right now. You are a mother. Your mother, a wonderful mother. And father. <laughs> Amen. Now, as you're taking your seats, here's what I'm going to ask everybody to do. Don't let them sit down before another mother or father hugs them before they get to their seat. Amen. Amen. I won't catch them while they're coming down the aisle.
Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Doesn't God do all things well? Now here's what I'm going to tell you. I know we had an altar call. I know we had baby dedications and there's a lot happening at this altar this morning. Amen. But this is who we're supposed to be, amen? This is how things are supposed to work. We're supposed to be the church. Here's what I want to let you know. That there is hope. There is faith. And what I want you to understand is that if anybody in here, at all, in any area of your life, is experiencing any hopelessness at all, at all, for whatever the reason is, I want you to walk down here right now. God has formed this altar. He has prepared this altar for you to be delivered. If you need your faith restored, that there's things on the altar and you've been trying to believe God for it, I want you to walk down here right now. For whatever the issue is, I want you to understand something. As you are walking, God is already sending the miracle in your direction. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As you're walking, God is already healing you. If you believe that, I want you to just lift your hands right now, that you're already being healed, that you're already being set free. God is already fixing the relationship. He's already taking care of the situation. He's already healing you. Deep down in your belly, he's already healing you. Thank you, Jesus. I want to speak to that person that God is healing that that stomach digestion issue, that issue in your digestive system. That God is healing you right now. Thank you, Jesus. That person you can't get away from your past. That other people have forgiven you, but you have a hard time forgiving yourself. God is forgiving you right now. Release yourself. That person just says, you say to yourself a lot, I just can't do it. God is giving you strength right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to ask you to do something else, congregation. I want you to stretch your hands again. I want you to tell these individuals that you're free. I want you to tell them again that you're free. Tell them again that they're free in Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want to speak to a person that says this, that the enemy's been telling you that you can't be free. Who who is that? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Could you lift your hands for me? 
Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you right now for the release of your anointing, for the release of your power, for the release of your purpose, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that every obstacle, Lord, that would stand against her is broken in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for every guilt in the past, Lord, is broken in the name of Jesus. Lord, for everything that stands against her, Lord, we break it in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that you would loose your power, loose your anointing, Lord, loose your presence, Lord, in an awesome way, Lord, and set her free, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, that even as she walks this morning, that she would walk lighter, Jesus, Lord, that she would walk, Lord, with more pep in her step, Lord, because of how you're setting her free, Lord. Lord, even from the crown of her head, Lord, to the soles of her feet, Lord, make her right now even a different person in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you right now for the hope to be restored, for faith to be restored, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Jesus, for every time that she would look in that mirror, and see something else, Lord, I thank you right now that you would cause her to see what you see, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, fix her eyes. Fix her heart, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, 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 Jesus. You know, when times where God says, something happens and it doesn't work out how you want it to and you wonder if God is ever going to use me ever again God are you ever going to do anything in me ever again was the time when you used me the last time the last time I want you to say something to the Lord right now and he's going to honor it I want you to say try me again Lord Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for your power, Lord. Your presence, Jesus. For your anointing right now, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I bless you for what you're doing. Lord, I thank you for hope. But I thank you for faith, Lord, for freedom, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, for your healing anointing, for your precious power to fall on your people, Lord. Come on, anybody want to just praise the Lord with me right now? Anybody just want to worship God for me right now? Just worship God with me right now. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your power, Jesus, Lord. For your anointing, Jesus, Lord. For the oil of joy for mourning, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. Oh 
for your anointing, Lord, for deliverance, Lord. Set her free, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. Shall we never be the same again, Lord? I thank you for your healing. Healing to come, Lord. Somebody worship the Lord right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you right now that you release every gifting, Jesus. Stir up that prophetic anointing in the name of Jesus. But I thank you, Lord, that when this, when this woman begins to pray, Jesus, Lord, that you would hear her from heaven, Lord, and answer that prayer, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Jesus. Lord, Lord, everything that she has on the altar, Lord, that is coming to fruition in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Lord. I praise you right now, Jesus. Lord, for your power, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Somebody put your hands together right now. Somebody put your hands together right now. Come on, somebody praise the Lord right now. Isn't God good? Hasn't he been good? Doesn't he continue to be good? I can guarantee you this, God is good right now. He'll be good in an hour from now. He'll be good later on this evening. I guarantee you this, that God will be good tomorrow. He'll be good next week. He'll be good next month. Hallelujah. If you trust him, he'll be good next year. Hallelujah. Somebody praise the Lord one more time. Thank you, Jesus. If you've never praised the Lord before, all you got to do is just lift your hands, open up your mouth, and say these words. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the highest praise that you can give him. You don't have to speak in tongues and you don't have to run around this building. But one thing you can do is just lift your hand. All you got to do is lift one and just say hallelujah. Somebody say it again. Hallelujah. Just the people that believe they're free. Say it again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say thank you in advance, Jesus. Thank you in advance, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now listen, I know that this isn't church as usual. But you did something <laughs> that God's been waiting for you to do. is to release him. You weren't releasing me. You releasing God. Sometimes we come to church, we're too bound up. I think how nice we look keeps us from being able to praise God. <laughs> but hey, let me tell you this. I'm going to remind you of something. And then what I want to do is pray for everyone. Amen. 
I want to pray for everyone right after that. God is reminding us right now that this year is the year of release. Spoke at the beginning of this year. Now, I don't know what's been held up above you and what it is that you've been waiting on, whether it's a promotion or a business or release of anointing or gifting or just releasing greater faith in Jesus. I don't know what it is. But this is the year of release, and God is getting ready to do greater in the second half of the year than he did at the beginning of the year. Some of you already have testimonies. You already know what God has done at the beginning of this year already. But God said he's going to do greater at the end of the year. So if you have not had release yet or your miracle is sitting right above your head, I want you to say these words right now and something is going to get released into your spirit. I want you to say, this is the year of release and I receive it in Jesus' name. Come on, high five somebody and say in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, for those of you who are wondering what's happening right now, I'm going to just be honest with you. I've been delivered for some, from some things, and God didn't have to do it. We're just a bunch of old sinners saved by grace and thankful that God keeps holding on to us. And we're just willing just to thank God for it. Anybody else been delivered from anything? Anybody else released? But then if you release, I want you to praise God. Just give him about 30 seconds right now. Y'all don't have to praise God, I understand. Hallelujah! But I remember during you, Pastor's anniversary when you came up here for healing and you didn't walk the same way you're walking right now. It looks like things are getting better. It looks God, like God's healing is happening. And let me tell you what I saw in the spirit. I was believing God you were gonna be here today. I was believing, God, you were going to be here today. Because God is going to release your healing right now. Do you believe it? Thank you, Jesus. Now listen. Here's what you don't understand. How she's holding on to my hand right now. And this is the things that I go through when I'm, I'm just sitting with God and believing God for what's going to happen. God told me to anoint my hands this morning. And so what I did is I poured oil in this hand, and I can feel that oil in my hand right now. And I know I washed my hands. 
but I can feel it right now. God is releasing your healing, Mother. And that walking is going to get better and better. Now here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Just like you did again, I want you to give God the greatest praise you can muster right now. Because he's healing you and setting you free. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for your healing power and anointing. We count it done in Jesus' name. Somebody say hallelujah. You're released. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right. I'm getting excited in here. Because I can see God doing what he does so well. Amen. You believe in God for anything right now, just want you to lift your hand. Just lift your hand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, here's what I'm going to ask ladies who are covered by the blood. <laughs> I want you to, uh, if you will, I want you just as a sign of a agreement in faith in what God is going to do in Reverend Baldwin, right? Okay. To stand with her. Can you do that? Can you stand with her? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The things that God spoke to you early, earlier, those things mean something to you? Could you lift your hands right where you are? Because I'm not going to lay hands on you, but God is going to touch you. Amen? Sometimes all we need is a touch from God. You understand what I'm saying? I just want you to just hold up your hands. Lord, in the name of Jesus, touch those hands, Lord. Lord, touch, the, touch her in a special way, Lord. I thank you for revelation, revelation knowledge to enter into her in such a mighty way that you would unlock the mysteries of that Bible, unlock the mysteries of your word to her in such a special way, Lord, that she would preach with power, Lord, that she would teach with understanding, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord. You said in your word in Deuteronomy 29, 29, that the secret things of the Lord belong to, the secret things belong to the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever. I thank you that you release revelation to her Lord, that, that people would be blessed, Lord, that people would hear the word that is coming out of her and glorify the Father, Lord. Lord, she's not looking for recognition or for fame, Lord. Lord, she's not looking for a platform, Lord. She's not looking for those things. She just wants to be used by you. So, Lord, I ask you to use her in a mighty way to use her in a special way, Lord, to take her to places, Lord, that she didn't think she could go, Lord, that she would open doors, Lord, that she didn't think would be open, Lord, Lord, that she would confound, Lord, and astound, Lord, those who've been trying to keep her down. I want to tell you this, uh, Reverend Baldwin, <laughs> that sometimes God makes, a, makes us a first person in a second position. But we thank God for that second position. Thank you, Jesus. So sometimes God makes us a first person in a second position. So then when we're released, we'll stay humble and just do what God asks us to do. Not looking for nothing. But we hold people up. We prop people up. But now God is about to do this. He's about to release David. <laughs> Who's been under Saul. And release David to step into the authority that belongs to David. I want to say to you these words. Do not be afraid of their faces. Walk into your destiny. 
Somebody say, walk into your destiny, Reverend. Amen. Amen. Let's put our hands together for the last time. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Can you just lift one hand? Lord, I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for your power, your presence, Lord. I thank you for your anointing, Lord. I thank you for what you're doing in your people, Lord. Release faith, Lord. Release miracles in their life, Lord. Release testimonies, Lord. Lord, I bind the hand of the enemy that would try to stand against them, Lord. I bind every attack that's sent against them. Send it back to the sender in the name of Jesus. Release your presence, Lord. Release your anointing. Release your salvation. Release your justification redemption on your people, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that everything that they have laid on the altar, Lord, is yes and amen, Lord. Everything in you that they've been asking for is already yes and amen, Lord. I thank you right now that they begin to see, Lord, the fruition of that manifestation in this week, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that even today, Lord, in the next couple of days, Lord, that they begin to see what God is doing, Lord. And when they see what God is doing, that they will lift their hands and tell him thank you. Lord, I thank you for miracle, for promotion to come, Lord. Bless their homes. Bless their houses, Lord. Cover them in the blood of Jesus, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for our children who are going back to school tomorrow, Lord, and those who are already in school. Bless them, Lord. Bless them in every way. Bless every teacher, every principal, every administrator, Lord. Lord, we bind the hand of the enemy that will try to come into those schools, Lord, and rob, Lord, steal and destroy. Lord, we bind it in the name of Jesus. We bind it in the name of Jesus, and we cover every classroom in the blood of Jesus. We cover every teacher in the blood of Jesus, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you would stop, that you would frustrate the plan of the enemy, Lord. Right now, in the name of Jesus, that person that might be thinking about doing something deplorable, Lord, we bind it in the name of Jesus. Set that person free in the name of Jesus. Set them free. Loose them, Lord. Loose the, the, the hold that the devil has on them, Lord, and send them to your presence, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we count these things done, Lord, and we'll, re, we'll go out of this place knowing that you are our God and we are your people, and we thank you for it. Somebody say amen. Say amen again.